Joe, good morning. Got a trivia question for you. Okay. All right. Is Unitarian Universalism a religion? You know, that is a very propitious question because I have been researching that with you. Mm -hmm. And I found, actually, it is. Unitarian Universalism was formed from the... You got to get closer, Joe. What? You got to get closer to the mic. Well, okay. Actually, it is. Unitarian Universalism was formed from the consolidation in 1961, only a few years ago, of two historically separate Christian denominations, the Universalist Church of America and the American Unitarian Association, both based in the United States. The new organization formed in this merger was the Unitarian Universalist, UU, Association. So you're like a scholar, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, here's another trivia question for you. As you mentioned, Unitarian Universalism grew out of Christianity, but we're no longer considered a Christian religion. What happened? Well, as you know, Christianity is based on Jesus Christ, and we are not. Um, Unitarianism, made up of a Christian denominational family of churches, was first defined in Poland, Lithuania, and Transylvania in the late 16th century. Universalism came about much later. In 1899, the Universalist General Convention adopted the five principles, the belief in God, belief in Jesus Christ, the immortality of the human soul, sinful actions have consequences, and universal reconciliation. But as time progressed, the basics of Unitarian and Universalist beliefs led their followers away from Christianity. For instance, in the 19th century, under the influence of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who himself was a Unitarian minister, Unitarianism began its long journey from liberal Protestantism to its present, more pluralist form. Universalism denies the doctrine of everlasting damnation. We do not believe in that. And proclaims belief in an entirely loving God who will ultimately redeem all human beings thus leading to the concept of accepting people of all faiths and beliefs. You know, if I was a history buff, that would be really interesting. <laughs> Thanks. But you know, that whole um, accepting all people, that must be why we work to meet everyone's needs here, by providing gender-neutral accessible restrooms on our second floor. Well, yeah, and also we welcome our children into our sanctuary, and we provide hearing devices for those who need them. And, you know, and we think knitting is fine in the church service. Mm -hmm. It's fine. We are stronger together. And, you know, if anyone ever wanted to learn more about us, all they would have to do is email member-care at firstuu.com. Did you get that? It, it was member-care at firstuu.com? Okay, let's see if I can get it. Member-care at uu.com? First, at first you. UU. Oh, I'll do that again. Member <laughs> at care? We'll get it later. Okay. Are you going to write that down somewhere? Uh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> well, should we light our chalice? Oh, I think that's a great idea because that's a good introduction for us. All right. Now, I've got something to read. Would you like me to read it while you do it? Please. Okay, good. I'm going to. I'd love to. Why a flaming chalice? The question comes. It's the cup of life, we answer. A cup of blessings overflowing a cup of water to quench our spirit's thirst, a cup of wine for celebration and dedication, the flame of truth, the fire of purification, 
oil for anointing, healing. Out of chaos, fear, and horror, thus was the symbol crafted a generation ago. So may it be for us, in these days of uncertainty, sorrow, and rage, and the light to warm our souls and guide us home. Okay, now that we have lit our chalice, let's turn and greet our neighbors. But remember, five minutes. Because <laughs> I know us. You know, I could go on for 20 minutes and then want more. So go ahead and get started. <laughs> greet your neighbors, wander around, say hi, make a community. Pour moi. Can you say something about Big Waller here? It's right here. Thank you. And I'll say I'm going to pretty much flowers. say what I said to you. Okay. Yeah. How do you time five minutes without a timer? So the clock up there? Oh, because I have the watch. I mean, I was. You set it right as the short for the long hair and the bun, too. That's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. We have no steam ball with you. No, it's fine. I can, I can do it. All right. So I'll mention the flowers and you can come in. I will. Wow. This is says Vic Waller on yeah. it. All right, that's five minutes, five minutes. Please return to your seats. The airplane will be taking off any moment. Please buckle your seatbelts as you return to your seats. Please buckle your seatbelts as you return to your seats. We're so glad that you want to meet your fellow passengers. <laughs> However, it is time to have your seat because we're going to take off without you or with you. Ooh, you guys mind very well, thank you. I know we all want to talk forever, but that's not gonna to happen today. So this, this is the time when we think about joys and concerns that are in our hearts. We use stones, whoa, stones <laughs> to represent those joys and sorrows. The water represents the love of our community. We drop a stone in the water to seek the softening of our sorrows and the amplification of our joys. One joy we have today are our flowers, which were given today by Mary Mark in celebration of all December birthdays.
And one sorrow, and it's especially sorrowful for me, was the passing of Dick Waller. Dick was one of my mother's contemporaries when my mother came to this church. So I've been hearing about Dick Waller pretty much all my life. So it's sad that he's gone. However, from what I understand, his health was not well at the end. So please keep him in your mind and in your, and in your hearts. All the individual joys and sorrows that we have come together in one bowl of water so that they can be symbolically shared and born by us as a community. We invite you now to come forward, up the side aisle and back down the middle to amplify your joy and soften your sorrow. Wait a minute, Joe. I don't I? Let's try that again. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we will now drop three more stones into our water of community. One for all the joys and sorrows outside these walls that go unmentioned. A second stone for these joys and sorrows that go unspoken that we have closely guarded in our hearts. And lastly, a stone for the brokenness in our world as we search for ways to be agents of wholeness. To stand in the breach. We're giving our tech team a real run for their money today. Oh, yeah. I don't understand modern. So there was a section that we accidentally skipped. And so I'm going to go back to it real quick. Every year around this time of year, we collect child-sized hats, gloves, mittens, you name it, to trim 
our congregation's Christmas tree. After we collect all of those child-sized winter wear items, we then donate them to the children at South Avondale Elementary. At the same time, we also collect gifts for unhoused children in the Cincinnati Public School District for Project Connect. After the service today, you may come forward. If you brought donations, put them under our Christmas tree, any gifts under our Christmas tree. If you have hats, gloves, mittens, that sort of thing, feel free to trim our mitten tree. We're going to do that after the service because our service does have a lot going on. And don't forget, don't wrap the gifts. We were pretty confused the first year we did this. But don't wrap them because they would like to see what they are and wrap them with the proper label on them. So thank you very much. And if you did not bring any donations today, there'll be another chance to give at the Holiday Hoopla next Saturday, yes, next Saturday from 1 to 3, or during the service next Sunday at 10 a.m. So, our service begins today long, long, long ago. The year was 1987. And Unitarian Universalist congregations across the nation had decided they needed a new agreement on how they were going to be together as a faith community, a new covenant. So that June, they gathered in Little Rock, Arkansas, and voted to amend Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Bylaws. The first section of the new Article 2 read as follows. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, compassion, and human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process in our congregations and in society at large, the goal of a world community with peace, justice, and liberty for all, respect for the interdependent web of all existence, of which we are a part. The living tradition which we share draws from many sources. Direct experience of that transcending mystery of wonder, affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to renewal of our spirit and the openness to the forces which create and uphold life. Words and deeds of prophetic people which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and transforming power of love. Wisdom from the world's religions which inspires us in our ethical and spiritual life. Jewish and Christian teachings which call us to respond to God's love by loving our neighbors as ourselves. Humanist teachings which counsel us to heed the guidance of reason and the results of science and warn us against ideologies of the mind and the spirit. Spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. Grateful for the religious pluralism which enriches and ah, enables our faith we are inspired to deepen our understanding and expand our vision. As free, as, as free congregations, we enter into this covenant, promising to one another our mutual trust and support. That was a lot. These days, we simply know these words as our seven principles and six sources. The Article II revision took hold in congregations across the nation, and soon Unitarian Universalists started exploring how the seven principles and six sources applied to them personally. Curriculums were created, sermons were given, and music was produced, all to highlight our seven principles and six sources. So it was, quite naturally, that not even 20 years later, in 2005, 
seminary student Darlene Marshall conceptualized the first Unitarian Universalist holiday built around our seven principles, named simply Chalica. This week-long holiday invites Unitarian Universalists to honor and celebrate our seven principles by reflecting on one principle each day. Today, individuals and congregations around the nation celebrate Chalica starting the first Monday in December. And many have even added an eighth day for the eighth principle. Drafted in 2013 by Paula Cole Jones, former president of the diverse revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministry, the eighth principle states, we, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and in our institutions. This church has yet to adopt the eighth principle, but we will be using it during today's celebration of Chalica. That's right, friends and familiars, it's time for another alternative worship. It's time for a brand new game show. Let's play Wheel of Chalica, or sorry, Wheel of Principles. <laughs> We have a very uneventful title screen as well. <laughs> we could skip it. There we go. I told you, very uneventful. <laughs> All right, beloveds. Since this is the first time anyone has ever played Wheel of Principles, let me explain the rules to you. It's very simple, in just a moment, we're gonna call eight people forward, eight volunteers. You'll come up here and you'll get a chance to spin the wheel of principles. Depending on where your wheel lands, you'll be given a challenge. This challenge might be a question you have to answer or an action you have to take. And if you complete the challenge successfully, you will get a prize from the prize box. <laughs> Our very own Vanna White, Miss Jo Ellen, <laughs> will be assisting our volunteers, and I, Meredith Plummel, Plummer, will act as your host. So are you ready to play? <laughs> Wonderful. Let's begin by recruiting our eight volunteers. If you would like to play, raise your hand, and Joe will call on you. We can't, we, if. Excuse me, but three doesn't make it. Three is not going to work. Ooh, I see more. I see more hands, they're coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we got up, yay, come on up. Have a seat. I'm nervous. <laughs> So let's begin with Brett. Brett, will you come forward and spin our wheel? No, first principle. All right, Brett, come up to our microphone here. Joe, will you please grab our first principle challenge?
Bring it forward. To here, Joe, to here. Joe says this Can is I a hard you? challenge. Can I call a friend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you'd like to. If you need to call a friend for this, um, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the question, Brett, who is important to you and why? Who is important to me and why? So many people are important to me, but my wife is very important to me because she seems to love me despite all my foibles. And I miss her even this morning because she's running a cross country race. Aww. I think that deserves a prize. <laughs> Joe, what did Brett win? Did he win affirmation cards? <laughs> they're very tiny. Nope, they're tiny. <laughs> yes, those are it. Here, oh, hold on. This is the phenomenally beautiful prize that Brett will win. <laughs> it is called I Am My Own Masterpiece. Because you are important too, Brett. <laughs> All right, Roz, come on up. Is that how you pronounce it, Roz? Oh, spin again. <laughs> I'm so glad you think it's fun you get to spin again. And again! Spin again! Spin again! Spin again! All right. Our second principal. Roz, please come up to the mic. Uh, I don't know. Again, you might need to call. Oh, Mira said you can't. Okay. So, Roz, the question is, describe a moment in your life when someone showed you compassion. Um, there are many occasions when I've been shown compassion, and uh, last Sunday, I was um, actually the worship leader at our congregation in, um, in Phoenix, Arizona, and we are... Uh, just as I'm sure you are a very loving congregation. And in the process of doing the service, I forgot our ritual to have people come up and drop stones or uh, light a candle. And the, the uh, song leader for the day said, Roz, you didn't do the ritual. Do you want me to do it for you? And I said, thank you very much. <laughs> because none of us are perfect. And so I, I very much appreciate the fact that we work as a team, that we take care of each other, and, um, and that we're constantly together. I'm also um, a lay pastoral associate, and I got the privilege of sitting with a member whose son's lung had collapsed, and he was in ICU. But the gift was not so much to her as it was to me to be able to sit with her, to, uh, for her to give me the gift of compassion, the time and the energy. Um, so those are, are just my examples for today, but thank you for allowing me to share. Those are great examples. Thank you, Roz. Wow. Roz, I think for that, you wow. get a heart pillow. <laughs> Beth. <laughs> oh, we already did the first principle. Spin again. Third principle. All right. We're almost going in order here. I'm 
positive you can do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, Beth. The challenge is show us one skill that you have. Show you one skill. Show that you us. Have. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some chose to believe it. I know they're wrong, wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Woo! Beth. Origami, she will learn a new skill. <laughs> we all learned together, and now you can learn origami. Thank you, Beth. Did you know that the Muppets were my daughter's favorite show? I did not. <laughs> all right, now you know. Allison? Look at Sierra. <laughs> Fifth principle. Okay. I'm the first person she didn't say I can do this. <laughs> I think you can do this, Allison. The question is, what is a cause you are passionate about and why? So many. I am, one thing I am passionate about is um, reducing the waste that we all make as humans. I think we um, consume far more than we need, many of us. And so I'm on a personal journey to reduce what I use and then reuse what I use rather than send it to trash or recycling. Um, yeah, reducing waste. Thank you. it easier to get your message out. A handheld microphone. So because you use your voice, you get a mic. <laughs> you. Now, I think it's time that we take a break and take a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, I'm Meredith Plummer. You may know me. Hi, I'm Meredith Plummer. You may know me from such hits as Meredith's Storytime Studio or the brand new game show, Wheel of Principles. I'm here in my home studio today with a question for you. Do you appreciate these program offerings? What about our robust Lifespan Faith Development Program? Or our... Again, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, I'm Meredith Plummer. You may know me from such hits as Meredith's Storytime Studio or the brand new game show, Wheel of Principles. I'm here in my home studio today with a question for you. Do you appreciate these program offerings? What about our robust Lifespan Faith Development Program or our joyous music program? Do you like having a clean and well-maintained facility or do you like getting reimbursements in a timely manner? If so, then you should know that the share the plate for the month of December is staff. We do not have any volunteers standing by to take your calls, but you can still give. Just text GIVE to 
717-7373. Or go on our Breeze member system and click Give Now. Or you can give online at firstuu.com. Just select Staff from the drop-down menu. You can also write a check to First Unitarian Church of Cincinnati and mail it to our address, which is 536 Linton Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45219. Just write staff on the memo line. If this is your first time with us, please let the virtual plate pass you by, and thank you. And don't forget, don't forget, no amount is too small or too big. Welcome back, welcome back. Joe, where are we? I don't remember. Oh, that's right, we're on our fifth contestant. Oh, because I got confused with the numbers. They got me really confused. I know, you have to keep... I, I know. It's, so, it's a very complicated game okay, show. We've done one, two, three, and five, right? That's correct, one, two, three, and five. Good job. Cynthia? Yeah, well, let's see if you can do it, Cynthia. Oh, spin again. Four. All right. <laughs> I promise we did not play on this. <laughs> Cynthia, step right up to the mic. I love Wheel of Fortune. I've always wanted <laughs> to spin the wheel. All right, Cynthia. Tell us one thing you believe. One thing I believe. I believe that all human beings and all the animals and even the plants are equal in some way. We're not all the same, but we need to respect all of them. And, and the, I mean everything, the earth, all that. So. I'm going to go back. World religion book. Because you told us what you believe, you get to learn about other people's beliefs. Yay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, come forward. Thank you. Well. You got to spin the wheel, Joe. Amanda Joe, thank you. At some point, we're just going to pick a principle. <laughs> Eighth principle, okay. <laughs> Amanda Joe, what's one thing about racism or oppression you've learned about in the past year? I've learned more about microaggressions, like um, small little things that are said that are not meant to be mean, but they are. <laughs> so um, microaggressions against people of color, uh, people with disabilities. 
Thank you, Amanda Jo. You get an anti-racist coloring book. All right, Tim, you're next. There's two principles left, so we'll give you a couple spins, but if you don't land on it, we'll just choose one. One more try, let's see. Oh, no, another try, I lied. There we go! All right. So Tim, the question is, what does peace look like to you? What does peace look like to me? I don't think that peace is the absence of conflict. I think peace is the ability to find common ground in the midst of conflict. Thank you. You get a peace sign. <laughs> All right, D. You could spin if you really want to. I think we know where this is going. <laughs> hey, look, you're right next. <laughs> hey! You are not going to need help on Good. Good. All right, Dee. The question is what's your favorite thing to do in nature? Um, I would say my favorite thing to do in nature is to walk around in it and look at it and enjoy it. That is a great answer! <laughs> you get... Now, these are not self-explanatory, but they are fruit. They are produce bags <laughs> that look like fruit. Yeah. There you Thank go. you. So, thank you. All right. Friends and familiars, we have run through all of our questions on our wheel today, which means our time together is almost over. But first, we have a bonus round. This is for anyone in our audience. So you all are safe. And the question is, Article 2, the part of the UUA's bylaws, which outlines our principles and sources, has been undergoing review for several years. A draft version of the article was recently released to the shock of many. As the draft makes no mention of Unitarian Universalism's principles or sources. What does the draft mention instead, and what are your thoughts on this revision? If you've read the draft and you have thoughts, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Kim, come forward. This was totally spontaneous. Um, Not a plan at all. No. So it struck me that the uh, Article 2 was last revised in 1987. I was five. Um, today I'm 40. The world has changed a lot since then. I have changed a lot since then. And in general, I think progress is good um, because thinking about 1987 versus today, we have come a long way. And I think our institutions should reflect that. So. The revision speaks to love as the, the enduring force that holds us all together. Um, surrounding that visually, so it's not laid out in the list, but it's more of a circle. So in a circle around love are interdependence, pluralism, equity, gener generosity, justice, and evolution. Um, I like it at, at first glance because it's laid out visually instead of in a list, so it allows for a little more diversity of interpretation and understanding um, from people who you know, maybe think visually or think with words or just a little more neurodiversity than what we have now. Um, but at the same time, 
the paragraphs before and after those words have some very academic language that I found it difficult to parse. So maybe it's not as inclusive as I think. So I don't know, I haven't decided yet what I think about it. Sorry, mm -hmm. Meredith. Um, but I will be paying attention and listening to the discussions that will be happening about it, and I'd encourage everyone to do the same. Um, form your own opinion, and thank you for listening to mine. Thank you so much, Kim. You know, I think, I think that deserves a very special prize. So you get a one-of-a-kind autographed picture of me! Thank you. Are, are, you are you sure, like, an antique road show, they figure out whether it's a copy or not? Now, you... That is the original. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going to make so much money selling this on Antique Road Show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kim. Well, folks, that is our time today. But before you leave, for all of you who didn't get to come up here and show us your stuff, please make sure that on your way out, you pick up a consolation prize of a little tea light chalice. And um, please join us in saying our closing words. They will appear on the screen momentarily. Perhaps. There we go. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Wait right there, don't go anywhere because more Chalka videos are coming your way. Just tune in to YouTube every day. Wait right there, don't go anywhere because more Chalka videos are coming your way. Just tune in to YouTube every day this week. Same Chalka time, same Chalka channel. Hey kids and adults, are you looking for some holiday fun? Well, great! Join us at First Church next Saturday from 1 to 3 for our holiday hoopla. That's right, Holiday Hoopla, next Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. at First Church. There will be caroling, crafting, cooking, games, and even pictures with Santa. That's the Holiday Hoopla, next Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. right here at First Church. Don't forget your donations for our Mitten Tree and Project Connect. Morning! Sunday, December 11th is your last day to bring your donation to our December donation drive. Don't miss it. Are the short days bringing you down? Finding it hard to concentrate? Ask your doctor about attending the Winter Solstice Celebration. The Winter Solstice Celebration is a once a year event which offers a meal and worship. The Winter Solstice Celebration is only for those who can attend in person. Cost for the Winter Solstice Celebration varies. In most cases, the meal costs $5 per person or $20 per family, while the worship is free. Welcome back the sun with the Winter Solstice Celebration.
In most cases, you do not actually need your doctor's approval to attend the Winter Solstice Celebration. Please do not waste their time. The Winter Solstice Celebration is a low-risk activity where the only side effect is merriment. Plan to attend the Winter Solstice Celebration? Mark your calendars now for Wednesday, December 21st at 6 p.m. Worship at 7. All Age Christmas Eve Service, Saturday, December 24th at 4.30 p.m. Be there or be square. Thank you for joining us for this very fun service today. Just a really quick announcement I didn't get on the commercials. Um, the Holiday Hoopla does need helpers, so please make sure you sign up or visit that link in your email uh, sometime this week. And D. Um, just to let everyone know, and as a reminder, the Committee on Shared Ministry will be um, in this general area over here if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns um, about the work that we're doing. Um, just to remind everyone, we have completed um, receiving the submissions, so we're in the process of putting that together into the poll that will be sent out to the congregation in the next couple weeks. Um, so again, if you have any questions or comments, um, come find myself, Ellen, um, and, or no, well, I think Nick, Nick's on the committee, but I think he's got bells after this. So it'll just be Ellen and I. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.